Okay, this is chapter three, phlebotomy, methods of specimen collection. Again, this should start sounding familiar, a little redundant a after a while. Um, the collection of a specimen is a vital part in testing. It is required that the procedure is done properly in order to ensure accuracy. Know those words, ensure properly to ensure, or done properly to ensure accuracy. In general, the patient may be seated in a chair. Most times they are. Sometimes they're laying in a bed. Um, what you do need to know is that these two positions, and these are, maybe you know this by my CNA people. Supine position means they're laying down, facing up. They're laying on their spine, facing up, supine. That's how I always remember. They're laying on their spine, facing up. And prone position, how do I remember it? By They are prone to suffocate they're laying on their stomach okay know those two positions um also they start uh, again these first paragraphs are wonderful information when drawing blood from the back of a patient's hand the prone position may uh, also refer to the hand of the patient with the palm facing down but uh, when we record we just say dorsal hand it's the dorsal hand when collecting samples for glucose or cholesterol, underline that. It is necessary for the patient to fast, no foods, no liquids, for at least 12 hours before the procedure. And right beside that, I want you to write NPO. NPO means nothing by mouth. PO is a, there's some kind of Latin way to say. NPO. NPO. NPO, nothing by mouth. That P.O. is that Latin word by, by mouth, per mouth or per os or whatever that means, but it's per, per mouth. So that's why N.P.O. Um, glucose and cholesterol, 12 hours before the procedure. I know I did. And it will mess you up. If you eat, it'll mess that glucose cholesterol test. And you're, you're naturally going to go high after you eat. It's just what happens. And then your body responds to that. Is that why so, Pregnant people, when they take a glucose test, they fail it? Mm -hmm. Probably if they didn't do right. Right, because a lot of people, I mean, I pass mine, but a lot of people will tell me that they failed theirs. Like, Sometimes it's they ate or they just needed an extra test, but the, the second test really tells the tale. It really body does. Because your body naturally <laughs> goes high anyway. Oh, so it just happens. But your body responds. We want your body to respond. All blood tests. I want them done as early as possible when the door opens. Come on, now. Then I had to wait another hour. They call Ina Snooker. Now they say, hey, just make sure that I'm going to do my job. I'm just going to Snooker. Don't do not do that. We want to know for sure. I was hungry. That was too long. It does not matter. Because they can mess up a test. Just say something about diabetes is real. Yeah, I know. But she tried to say And you may have had it, and we don't even know now. No, I didn't. I bet she told. I would have told you to go home. See you later. They just made me sit out there in the lobby. Venipuncture. Venipuncture refers to the collection of blood from veins through use of a needle or syringe. That's just what we do. Collection of blood from the veins. Venipuncture. We're puncturing the vein. Um, we do all kind of testing. If blood is collected to determine the level of medications. The blood should be collected just before the next dose. So what we're needing to know is drug levels, and we need to know right before the next dose. We don't want it after you done. It's just like you just ate a candy bar. Of course your levels are gonna be high. So what happens? We don't want it right after you take your meds. We, don't, we want it right before the next med because that's gonna be your lowest. And we want to know your level at its lowest. We call that, that's your level. We want it to be therapeutic. It may have a range here that we need to get you here. So if you're here, next dose is going to take you on up just because that's what's going to happen. But we want you here all the time. So they're going to increase meds. So all these blood draws and stuff is very important. They play with people's meds because of it. They do a lot of stuff about these blood work. So make sure you get your blood work right. Y'all should already know the equipment by now. Your gloves. Put on in front of the patient to ensure safety or reassure safety. 
So they think, you know, okay, uh, wash your hands in front of them. Put some stuff on them. Something. Wash your hands, put this on them. Because they're thinking, oh, this is okay. I'm going to be all right. She's doing all the cleaning procedures, all the and above. Um, evacuated collection tubes. And they actually will fill to a predetermined amount if you just let them fill. Um, for this class, and Patricia, Patricia, you are the, Patricia, sorry, you are the fastest. She sees the blood squirt out and it's done. Yes. I need a little more blood, a little more to make sure. And I know it's working, but she, I'm telling you, she sees the blood, pulls it straight on out. <laughs> I'm, it's great for the she, patient. She they ain't wasting least. no blood. You talking about yeah. drain them, so she ain't draining. She ain't draining them at all. <laughs> but give me a little more blood, okay? But I haven't complained about that, have I? I said, I just tell you. Give me, give me, give me some blood flow. Okay. Needles available for evacuation systems. Holder and adapter. That's what we put on there. That's that plastic part. Syringes, tourniquet, alcohol wipes, gauze, bandages, needles. We, we know all that. Your site selection. In general, the medial cubital veins of the arm are most preferred. We already know the order, right? Because that was on our first test. Well, what's our order? Median cubital. And then? Cephalic and basilic. Cephalic and basilic. Yes. Um, but that is all, the, all of those are the anticubital area. When you draw from here, you can just put AC. Because somewhere you might have to uh, report where you draw it from. And most of the time you want AC. That's, that's when you want to just have AC, 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 AC. But, uh, you know, some people just don't have those veins there when you fill them. See them, get them. So we can get them from here too? Yeah. Yeah. As long as they're out there, you, know, you can fill them however he goes. But, you know, I, in some of my classes, they got stuck here, 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 going home. That's why I always say you got eight stick. Y'all can get eight, 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 eight right now. And be done. <laughs> Yes, y'all can. So don't 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 act like y'all just I've got holes on let me noop. Eight, eight. Y'all need to be walking out here looking and feeling like somebody done drawed all your blood out. But I don't want all that blood. <laughs> I don't I really don't. Um let's see. If the arms can't be used, the basilic vein and dorsal hand veins are receptive for puncture. Areas to avoid are those with the hematomas or scars, anything that just don't look right. Skin's messed up or healing or scars, um, just don't go there. Um, not only um, acne, uh, rashes, pimples, sores of any kind, because you know you can actually burns, you can actually the bacteria out of those like acne, pimples, things like that can actually get into their bloodstream if you're messing around in that area. So not only clean that area well and um but make sure you're not going in areas like that just find another there are places we can find um we're already looking here and then here then we go to the hands don't be sticking people down here that's got a good one here we really want them here but if they've got them here we want to look other places first but i know some of them guys got this one out here get it wherever but um, just don't go for the one that's straight poking out. We really want to get these first. It's just because good blood flow, good um, blood draw, all the above. Um, sometimes if no superficial veins, veins are apparent, blood may be forced into the veins by massaging the arm from the wrist to the elbow. I've actually seen people, you know, do this kind of like milk it up. Instead of down, you're milking it up back toward your where you headed. Uh, tapping the site with the fingers, applying a warm cloth, or lowering the extremity. My, that's my secret. Lower your extremity. You always, if you just put your arm down right now, you can feel the blood heavy in your arm. And um, so that is, uh, you're lowering your extremity. For the procedure, first we're going to identify the patient. Come to them in a friendly manner. Y'all are the happy people. Don't go in there looking like you hate your job. Because that's all, you're not in there long enough to explain nothing. You're not in there to explain or make them feel sorry for you. You you are the happy person, and, and you know you go in there with that negative attitude. I'm, you might get reported. You are the happy person. You either just go in there. This is what we got to do. And but don't add negativity to their already situation. So um, just remember that. Be that happy person. You ain't got to do so much. You got to go in there, stick, and get yourself out of there. 
Okay. Uh, make sure you're going and putting that tourniquet three to four inches above the site and underline that. Instruct them to make a fist. Um, clean the patient's arm with alcohol wipe. And um, how long it takes to, for it to dry? At what angle are we coming in? 15 to 30. And bevel side should be? Up. Then once you see some blood draw, remove your tourniquet, uh, remove the needle. Once the needle is removed, press down on the gauze to avoid hematoma. What they're trying to say is um, remove your needle first. Do not be squishing on that patient's arm with that needle inside. Um, check that the bleeding stops. Dispose your materials. Label your tubes and deliver them to the laboratory. That's, that's it. That's your job right there. Uh, sometimes you'll have a requisition form, and most of the time you will. Um, maybe, and I say RNs, maybe not, because we make the requisition form. <laughs> or are in a hospital, they're the ones who orders it, or maybe the doctor orders it. But um, it depends on where you're at. But you should have a piece of paper that goes along with that blood sample. It should not just be, you know, you sit in a, a tube. Um, and then uh, put that together with it. Uh, make sure labels are essential. Remember, and it really depends on where you're located, but I, this, is, this is what you should have on it. Your patient's name, first name, surname, ID number, date and time of collection, and your initials. And just get that in your head. You kind of just put that on all your tubes. If you have labels, you want to do so much, maybe you just have to put your initial. Um, do what your job says. That's not the important part. Let's get the blood. And we got to label it. Make sure their name is on there. That's point blank. That's it. Uh, name and birthday. Um, if you have labels, label it. Make sure that is the correct label. I always show the patient, is that your name? Because you have people who, who happen to be erroneous just like anybody else. Maybe um, the little stickers were put in the wrong chart. Don't always assume that those stickers belong to that patient. Look and match all the time. That patient identification is no joke. Um, in a bigger hospital, they'll, they'll send you a little slip with the stickers on there. Um, what we had to do, we had to uh, go to the patient's chart and pull their stickers. But if somebody put the stickers in the wrong chart, which happened, um, you can pull the wrong one. And like, who is this? Hopefully you're doing that before you stick it on the tube. But it happens. Capillary puncture, all that is your finger stick. We also call it a dermal, dermal puncture. Underline that, dermal puncture, finger stick. Usually we use the capillary puncture when small amounts of blood are needed or infant anemic. When collecting for newborns, underline that, the penetration depth, less than two millimeters. Another name for a lancet for your capillary blood collection or your finger sticks is called the monojet monoletter. And that's just the name. Just know what that is. It's the name for a lancet for capillary puncture. Underline, this is very important. Blood collected via capillary puncture is composed of blood from capillaries, arterioles, and venules, as well as uh, tissue fluids, which they call interstitial fluid, all of that. Why are we wiping off the first drop of blood when we're taking samples? It's contaminated, it's contaminated with tissue fluids. Underline that too. We wipe that first off. And they just show you your equipment. Pretty much you need your lancet, your, a finger, and uh, whatever you're gonna put it on. Sometimes it could be a slide. Sometimes, um, depends on what, what you're doing it for. Or it could be like a strip for diabetics. Really depends on why we're pulling this blood. Make sure you prepare the slide, supplies, identify the patient, and select your site to puncture. And normally they like that ring finger. And always, always, underline this, the, um, puncture the same in a smooth manner and cut should be oriented across the finger lines, fingerprint lines. Wipe off the first drop of blood and then collect your sample. Apply pressure just like you would. We just draw it from the finger. Just a little mini venue puncture, but it's capillary puncture. 
Requisition form again, fill it out, make sure all your correct information is there and label it, a blood smear. Sometimes you will do a finger prick or a finger stick, dermal puncture, all of the same things for a blood smear. It really depends on where you're working at or what you're doing. Maybe um, they do a type of an AB to find out where your AB's O, ABO, <laughs> goodness, with a blood smear. Um, the capillary puncture procedure may also be used to perform blood smears. Underline that first sentence in that paragraph that says, a blood smear is performed right after wiping away the first drop of blood. So we're still wiping away that first drop of blood. Uh, the top glass slide, what, what you do is you actually have two slides. And one is normally longer, and the other one is like a smaller square. But um, you're just putting it on your little slide. Y'all remember back in microbiology? You know, you had your little slides, and we played with slides, and we'd look under, take that slide and look under the microscope. Somebody prepared those slides. Yeah, you drop it from the and, and then that's somebody, yes. If you prepare, if you, I was, oh, I'm going to say it. Yeah, we're getting there. But if you um, did that in elementary, all that was already done for you. But that's how they did it. They, whatever it was, was smeared on there, and, and um, so you can see it easily. So that's what you're gonna do in the doctor's office, depends on where you're at. In um, Southwestern, I had to do it. We were cats, but uh, the doctor would do a vaginal smear. And um, we would actually have to smear that on, put some kind of setting lotion, lotion, setting stuff on it, <laughs> setting fluid, and, and put the little um, thing on top. And then he would go automatically and go look at it, see if they had any kind of infection that he could fix right then. And um, they, they stopped that later. Um, but that is just like the same thing. All you're going to do is smear it on there. What's the best angle for smearing that blood? 30 degrees. 30 degrees. I know I net. Then we're going to let it dry. Sometimes it's a little setting solution. It really depends on what it is and uh, <coughs> what they're looking for. But you'll learn that. That's something once you do one time, that's it. They didn't even teach us how to do that. We're like, what? He's like, yeah, put that on that slide. Put that stuff on it. Okay. <laughs> But that was pretty much it for your training. Um, arterial puncture. Arterial punctures, we do not do that. We do not do that here. They are not only painful, but um, they're very more dangerous. Uh, arterial punctures are harder to clot because they, they have more force. You actually got the force of your heart behind them arterial veins. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. You hadn't had to do a blood yet? Blood yes. Right, and they should, right, um, because that's what they're testing. That's, that's what they're testing, all the uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide. Are we going to be doing lab sticks? Yes, we'll be doing Do they count as sticks? Capillary. They, no, they count as the other column that, that we do. So they don't count as our sticks? <laughs> we, you actually have to have 40, 10 capillary. <laughs> what? And we do those together. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Um, the procedure is similar to venial puncture with the exception of the arterial puncture should be done with no exposure to air. Underline that. No exposure to air. Because we are testing what is in that blood so that that doesn't let the gas that's in the blood. And we have gas that's in the blood. Oxygen. Is that and, uh, carbon dioxide. Like, the blood is toxic or something? No. Um, respiratory problems. Oh, okay. When your body is compensating, your blood has different things in it that will tell the tale. You know, you may you may be complaining of uh, you can't breathe well, or it feels like you're uh, can't breathe, but but you're breathing fine. Uh, but but your oxygen level is in your blood is low. So um, they'll test that carbon dioxide might be too high, but it, it tells the tale. Um, very important especially with respiratory problems. Um, it, they, they can figure out how to treat you a whole lot easier. Sometimes you just have too much acid buildup in your blood. They'll do a pH, um, but mostly carbon dioxide, oxygen. Um, procedure, you put on your gloves, check for your supplies always, find your vein or artery. We're doing our artery. Radial, femoral, brachial. I like uh, radial. You're gonna find a good one there. Um, 
then break them. But most people you're gonna see doing this one right now. Um, how are we gonna know it's an artery? It's gonna have a pulse. So do we stick in this class anything that has a pulse? No. No, because that means it's the artery. We're not mess with that. What degree angle are we gonna do it in? It looks awful. Straight 90 degrees. And that just helps the blood glasses, like blood gases not to escape again. Um, make sure that you check that the bleeding has stopped, which is the last step in every procedure. Underline it. What's the last step in every procedure? Right. Do not leave your patient until you know that they have stopped bleeding. So I even, I let them hold it, hold a little pressure. I do, I go clean up a little bit. I make my sight. You never leave your table dirty, even, um, you know, for the next person to come in. Um, and that's what I do at that time while they're holding the pressure. And you tell them, hold pressure. And, and match them again. Because mm -hmm. they're going to just be holding their gauze on top of there. I need you to hold some pressure. So they'll be holding their taking out the Mm-hmm. And that's not how you fix a blood clot. But that's what we want, the blood clot. Um, make sure we label it, same as anything else. Um, underline that too, uh, that last very sentence. Automated systems may have labels that use barcodes, which are more reliable. Barcodes are more reliable, underline it. That's just what's important on that page. Okay, let's move on to chapter four. Specimen collection and transport. We already know all this stuff, right? Okay. You just added some information. But you got most of this already in your hand. So again, equipment, gloves, all kind of gloves. Disposable, you do not use them but one time. Goggles, antiseptics, um, antimicrobial substances. Mostly we use alcohol under that. That's the most common antiseptic. Of course, we use a tourniquet. And we use our collection tubes. In that, there is very, very, very important information. I told you, they, they stick some information in some weird places, but this is where this is there. It's made of glass or plastic, um, your collection tubes. Tubes contain a vacuum so that they suck blood into that tube. And when you've sucked enough, it will stop pulling. Um, some tubes contain anticoagulants which are additives. And, and y'all are confused on when I was asking questions, what I need you to get, because they're gonna ask you, what tests are tested in a blue tube? That's gonna be what test. What is in a blue tube is your anticoagulant. I had a opinion for that one that you made. Because the light blue was in the chart, but I couldn't find a royal blue anywhere. That's good, because we've talked about it. It's in one of the first year chapters, maybe chapter one. 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 Yeah, we didn't we don't went over there. It's in one, I think. But we'll go very, over it again. Very back too on that chart. Yeah. It's it's in there several times. That one, um those are the ones we're just sticking in there. You need to know your order draw. Those other ones will come. We're having a midterm to buy me next Tuesday. So the three and four, that will be the midterm, or over everything? It's probably, it's really going to be everything. So three and four won't have their own separate tests this week? Yes, they have a test this week. So we have three and four tests, and then a midterm too? Yes. So we will have a six test too? Very sorry. Possibly. No, we don't want to have one chapter, but see on Monday. That's going to be Thursday, but we're going to have Tuesday. We're doing this one Thursday. So you're studying all the same thing. So there should be no problem. <laughs> Chapter three and four is is this is just like the midterm. Just, you're not studying nothing different. You're studying the same stuff. So, okay. the so keep like, studying. Oh, yeah, uh, some feeling like some multiple choice. Is there more than 10 questions on the midterm? Yes. Is there more than multiple choice? No. Less a piece. Mm -hmm. Heparin. This is what y'all need to know. This book. Mm -hmm. Some tubes contain anticoagulants. Anticoagulants are substances that prevent 
blood clotting, so we don't want them to clot. Heparin is the preferred anticoagulant in clinical chemistry. Underline and start at. And they're gonna ask you, what's the preferred anticoagulant in clinical chemistry? Heparin. Heparin, yay. Lithium heparin is a general anticoagulant to study glucose levels. What's the difference? It's just lithium is in there. So which, which tube would lithium heparin go in? Yeah. Same tube, it's still green. Okay. Anything heparin is in a green tube. But you can still pull up glucose levels. Gray, you want to thank glucose. You can use a red tube for all these tests. So we're learning what you need to know. When you go to work, it depends on what, how little you are, how big you are. We was a smaller place. We didn't have our own lab. We didn't do our stuff. Most of our stuff went in a red tube. It has nothing in it or a separator in it. That's it. And then we sent it to the lab and let them do all they need to do. They knew what to pull out from each tube and they, they knew all that. They'll tell you, you know, I don't even need a whole tube. I need just this amount because they know what one test they got to pull or whatever, whatever they need. But um, yeah, anything heparin goes in heparin green, you know what I mean. That's in that song. That's that song, you know what I mean. Anyway, I, I, I'm telling y'all, y'all listen to y'all songs again. After you've learned what you've learned, go back and listen to those songs. And not only you'll be able to sing it better, you'll get it a whole lot better. You're not just listening, you understand it. Um, know that as well. Acid citrate dextrose is an anticoagulant used in blood collections. What is an anticoagulant used in blood collections? Acid, acid citrate dextrose. Get that in there too. Um, in the tubes with anticoagulants, it is very, very, very important to fill that tube to a spe specified amount. If you don't, the ratio is wrong. So you're trying to make sure that the accurate, you have an accurate blood additive ratio. Underline that. That's your words meaning you need to put all of the blood in the tube till it stops. And a lot of those will have like a small little line on there to help you. Um, but just know that vacuum is going to stop pulling as well. Then you got your syringes, you got your plunger, you got your tube, and you got your needles, all kind of needles. Needle size is very larger size. Um, gauge means smaller opening. So if I got a 23, is it bigger or littler than a 25? Big. Big. If I got a 27, do you want to get stuck with a 27 or a 21? 27. 27. Get those in your head because they is backwards. Uh, the length does not matter. The gauge is what is the size of the needle, the size of the opening. Um, a lot of times, hopefully, you'll get into a uh, facility where they buy all their stuff from one company. They're, all their colors will be the same. That BD, if they're using BD, all their colors are going to be the same. If they use, you know, sometimes they'll, well, it's cheaper over here this month. We'll get a deal. You know, it really depends on how your facility works. Um, a lot of times they just stick with one just because it's easiest to stick with one. So, the, but um, when they are uh, number crunching, they're going to go um, try to find another deal somewhere. So just know, most of the time, if you can, those colors would be the same. And, and these are pretty much BD colors right here. Um, our colors, I'm, um, 22 is black. They kind of they do match. But you'll see your 21 gauge butterfly needle. Normally it's in a green top, used for pediatrics. So start that one. And your 23 butterfly needle. I don't know if I said that backwards, but it normally has blue. And maybe not a blue top, but a blue wing. That's what they're meaning. The wings are those colors. So. Um, and our 25s are orange as well. Just just make sure um, that you're looking at it. A lot of people don't get it. You can get a butterfly, a 21 bu butterfly. It just means that the little wings are attached. That don't mean that needle, needle's any littler. And a lot of people be like, please just give me a butterfly. I want a butterfly. Thinking that the needle's going to be strong or smaller, but guess what? I'm gonna pull, you gonna act up, I'm gonna pull a 23 butterfly, 21 butterfly. Uh, it's a butterfly. 
it, but they don't get it. But everybody thinks those are small. Um, disposable unit has to be there. Of course, you need your shops container. Uh, most of them are uh, multiple use. Um, some of them are not. Centrifuge. That is after you've drawn the blood. How long do you let the blood clot before you put it in a centrifuge? What? No. No. 30 to 60 minutes. You got to allow the blood to clot. 30 to 60 minutes. Yes, you want it to clot. If it's not a clotter, it's still 30 to 60. You, you said one minute. 30 to 60 minutes. But I don't let, we don't let green salt clot. We just put Yes, some of them you do not. Okay. If it's going to clot, which tubes are going to clot? We'll, we'll put it that way. If we're going to oh, let okay. it clot, which one's going to clot? Yes, your red gold tops are the only ones that should be clotting because the other ones have what in them? Plasma. You was good with it, but yes. <laughs> but what is the, you're right. You put the plasma in there. But what is the stuff that's in the tube? Anticoagulant, so it will not clot. Okay. We're testing plasma out of the other tubes. Which is serum out of your red, gold, red, gray, all those weird little colors, red, gold colors. Okay. When I say red, gray, I mean the, they're, um, is that what you were meaning? It is. Bring me your paper. Where's your paper? Okay. You, you got to specify that. When you put red, gray, you meant the, um, I'm going to give you that. Remember, I, I minus the point because you put gray. I think I did. I oh, yeah, bring your paper. Let me see. I agree that before the glucose, and you know, that I had it on ice. We don't, they don't clot. We just send it out. Yeah, that's true. Because it's a gray tooth. Mm -hmm. It's got anticoagulant. What's the anticoagulant in a gray tooth? I don't know. <laughs> Guess where you can also find out what's in the tooth? Yeah. Where? 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 I think I don't have a gray tube. Yeah. But on the side of the tube is also tells what, what the tube is and tells you what's in it. So do you get uh, extra? Oh, you do. Like an SST will say serum separated? Yeah, serum separated. Tube. SST. Um, um, and your anticoagulants will have or what anticoagulant is in it. Oh, you still miss green though. Gotta count it up. But I see where you meant red gray. You didn't mean that gray tube. You meant the 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 one that looks like um I always call it camo. Mm -hmm. That is also a SST red gold that's tube. That that group. That's one they call it. Tiger tongue. Um you also have one called the bullseye. And that's just because it's red or gold and with black. That's the one we have. Thing. Yes, how, much, how much does that work? Is that for our grade? Worth? Yeah. A, a, a grade is a hundred. Okay, I'm just <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't do nothing else but hundreds. I mean, I want y'all to make all hundreds, but I'm saying when I, when I grade, it's top grade, it's always going to be a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. Because I don't know how to do point system and stuff like that. Yeah, I hated I that in college. Yeah, I really hated that in college. I can't, I can't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Trying to figure out, well, you get five points for this test. That's all I get, five points. Okay. I said, the yeah. <laughs> You'll see, and, and I think it's easier when you're doing it a certain way. When you're actually doing it like a computer program, trying to put it all together, then they got this many points, and at the end of class, they should have 200 points. But they, um, they figure it out. Okay. Y'all are going to hate listening to these. Um, your centrifuge, that's what it does. That's what it does. Sorry. It's a device or machine with fast rotating container, which applies radio force. Used to separate fluids of different densities as spinning blood. If blood has a separation device, it should be centrifuged once. So... If it does have, a, and they say separation device, that's the little gel that's in, in the red tubes. Um, 
dixotrophic jiggle. That separates your blood and your, well, your serum and your plasma. Anyway. Labels, again. And they reiterated at the end there, automated system may have labels. They use barcodes, which are more reliable. And they talk about barcodes over here a little bit. Y'all know in the grocery store, we use barcodes. So they're trying to get that into the hospitals, you know, scan you. <laughs> that, that's my product, and here's my medicine, and then um, insert it into the computer. Um, you always still ask them their name. You still talk to them. Somebody might have just accidentally put on, the, and I'm done it, put on the wrong um, bracelet. Done did it. Because we just was getting into our bracelet system, and, and Bill, I'm sure people still do them. But they, um, you know, they print one out, they left it to the side. And I don't know, another one printed and it just fell to the side and I picked up the wrong one. Um, they, they, and before the little exam was over, because we always have to exam them, it takes us about an hour to do a whole head to toe assessment, just trying to get them in the door. But um, by the end, I guess he looked at his name badge or his fingers, he's like, who is this? I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> But um, got to watch out. It's always about identifying. Ask that person their name. Just don't assume that because they're in that bed. Because ER is pushed the patient to the wrong floor, wrong bed. And you just go to that room just because you have an order for that shift change. You didn't know that was a new patient. You didn't know they just got there. You didn't know they was on the whole wrong floor. And you go try to do something. Yes, it happened. So always identify. Do not just do it. Um, they talk about barcodes again. And underline that last sentence there. Handwritten information cannot be converted into barcodes. It is a barcode, it's a barcode. So just remember that. Also, there's such a such thing as RFID tag. And it's just a tag that um kind of like a GPS kind of thing. Um dogs have RFIDs. So, you know, they GPS and I'm so mad. What I when it gets. Same, very much same. It doesn't mean that it has to be inserted under their skin, though. I'm so mad that my dogs, I didn't put a GPS on them. They got lost one time and I found them. And then they got lost again. And the mother went, we found two of the puppies, but the mother went, once she realized that the, that the two puppies were safe, she went looking for the other two. And she ain't been bad. It's been about two weeks now. And she never left the puppies. Even the ones that she wouldn't leave them, but the other two were lost, and she was trying to look for them, but she would not leave the other two. And I just feel so bad because I know this is what she was doing. What kind of dog? Chihuahua. Oh. Out in the wilderness looking for Brown. I passed one on the side of the road because I almost hit it. It was out there, like going towards Montreal. That I was it was crossing the road because I almost hit it. It's a little brown. It was about this tall. Uh, and I said, because I thought it was something coming out the woods. I said, what the hell is that? It was going across the road by the tattoo shop. Um, what's the name of the tattoo shop? Out there by Walmart? It was out that way. By Walmart? Uh-uh, it was behind she's Walmart. she's gotten lost, and we found her way at the tire store one time. Yeah, she was back there. You know the stones there and stuff? She was back there on that road. With a dollar generator. It's the motor road, right? Right there by Walmart, that road? Yeah. Yeah, she, it was a little brown chihuahua, so I like to hit it. And the car was slowing out the, it stopped at first, and it just crossed the road. It was a little brown. And I was like, that's a cute dog, but I was headed for it. I couldn't pick it up. Yeah. Have you checked on the lost and found pet pages? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got her on there. They're, they're probably a little bit of um, it. Just saying, because she, she, she's a traveler, too. Yes, Don't she mind. And she would, and we, I mean, I would leave the house she would i would be way i don't know a half mile down the road and i'll see her running like a greyhound dog like is it, it's a chihuahua <laughs> but that's, that's how she I was said, what is that coming out the woods and i slowed down and then she just got cold on my side it got cold on my hood he or she i just worked over and kept going that's how she was I'll go check. But I don't know where Stones and Walmart. Mm-hmm. And, they, and you know with the tattoo, it's a BB right there. I guess some of the kids, I think it's name of You know what that dollar generate on the motor? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it was a little brown show I walked. It, it was walking the road. She was going across. About how long ago was it? Last week. She might be on the motor right now. No, she was. <laughs> <laughs> she That's the where she got lost last time. We found her 
by the Toyota place. Now she went over there. She was over there by the Dodge place with stones and stuff. She was over there. Stones is like on the Moultrie Road. Yeah, that's what I was. I was headed to work. But not by Dollar General. It's a Dollar General on that road, too. Yeah. Yeah. She was right in between them. Well, you know what I mean? I got you. I got you. Yeah, I got you. That way. Okay, I was going the other way. Okay. The other Dollar General. You know, there's one on the corner right there by McDonald's. Oh, huh. Okay. Okay, got you. I'll go look for it. It's okay. Make sure I love that. Yeah, she might be still still running around. Um... Barcodes, handwritten information can be converted in barcodes and identity tags that, oh, it's on RFID, means um, radio frequency ID tags. Write that in there somewhere. I thought that was there. But it's wireless, silicone chips, those type things. It's the tag, identification tag. And make sure you have a requisition form with your labels, with your specimens. And underline that last one, report forms, Clinical chemistry may also include reference ranges. Now, all they're saying is if you pull the dialing level, the report may show, will probably show the, the normal ranges, and then are, is that range of that patient in or out. So the doctors don't have to remember that all of them. They're going to be there right there. And when you look at them, you can tell that they're out. Okay, and here goes your tubing. Page 33. Order a drone. This is coming straight out your book. But y'all know how we're going to remember. But there goes your yellow, the light blue, blue, blue. Gold, red, orange is another uh, part of that red gold group. So all that's still together. That orange is just uh, mixes. Uh, you mix it five or six times, but it is uh, it clots a whole lot faster. It's got a it's rapid um, clot activator. Which like if you need some blood, blood, like this right now, that's it. That's the one they're gonna pull. But most of the time, they're just gonna get a regular red or gold too. Then your green, your purple, the wishes, your lavender, and then your purple, pink, and white. They all go together. They all um, all got EDTA in them. And then your gray. That's how they roll. But this is oh, this is where all your good information is. Lots of good information. Page thirty-two. Thirty-two. And you said chart, this chart before already. Mm -hmm. But all of this you need to know. This whole little paragraph. Alkaline phosphate should never be collected in a gray top tube. Underline, know that. Blood that needs to be tested for lead should be in a tan top tube. Blood testing of copper should be in a dark royal blue top tube. Blood collected for blood cell count should be in a purple. That's your CBC. Blood cell count. Complete blood cell count. And blood collected for cytogenic analysis should be collected in a green top too. That's some just some weird odd tests that you well some of them are that, that does not just fall into the normal one. Remember those singularity. Remember those. Alkaline phosphates should never be collected in what tube? Green. Blood that needs for lead goes in what tube? Tan. I always remember that because I think tan and rust, for some reason, and lead go together. And that's how I remember tan. Uh, copper goes in what tube? Green. Also, uh, they call them trace element. Um, blood cell count? Purple. CBC, purple, lavender too. Same thing. And cytogenic analysis should be collected in what tube? Right. All right, come on over to uh, uses of your collection tubes. And that's, again, they're just telling you um, what it's used for, uh, where it's headed to. And they're not in order. They just they just put them there. Um, your yellow top tube, which is a regular yellow top tube, not your, um, but your SPS yellow. Just your regular yellow. It's got your ACD in there, which is acid citrate disc. Dextrose used for paternity testing and DNA studies. Underline that. Paternity and DNA. Acid citrate dextrose. ACD. Then your blue top tube, sodium citrate. Coagulation test. What, name me some coagulation tests. PT. 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 Uh, PT. Um, fibrinogen. 
All of that stuff has to do with clotting. So anything there would go in your oh, life. Oh, Heparin. Yeah, we do a heparin test. Heparin green, you know what I mean? Because that is um, for anticoagulants. Dark blue top two. That's your also put royal blue there as well. Just get that in your head. It's also EDTA. So make sure if you do anything, draw your EDTA tubes together. Just stick it right on in there with the EDTA tube. Stick it at the end. Um, it has trace elements such as copper. We just learned that in a little paragraph. And toxicology, very important. Toxicology copper. It says lead and zinc for your blue top tube, but we don't, our main tube for lead is tan. And it's just gonna be more accurate than the uh, tan tube. Uh, your red top tube, gold top tube, very similar. You can put an arrow to both of those little things. It, the mode of action, the blood is gonna clot. We're gonna centrifuge it, centrifuge it. And um, we do that to separate the blood from your serum. And we're gonna use it for immunology, serology, and chemistry. So what tubes are most of your chemistries coming out of? Red gold, red gold. Red gold. Red gold. Um, your light green over here, light green. So what did we learn for, for your green top tube? What did we learn? I know it's here, but um, what did we learn? And you can't even put arrows on these green tubes. Put you some arrows. Because they go together. The light green, dark green? Yes. They both have your um, pepper in there. Any, uh, your green tubes got pepper in, in it. Give me some tests that goes in your green top tubes. I don't know what y'all looking at. Y'all should have this in your head. Green top two. What goes? What's test that goes in a green top two? Ammonia, glucose, Ammonia, not so much glucose. CMP, BMP. When you say glucose, that was the main test you're saying. But glucose goes in what? What's the main one? Great. And all of those. Those are good ones. And the main one is your basic metabolic profile. If you don't know that, we're in trouble. Those, y'all got to get those in your head every day. That's like your medications. Those tests that go in the main tubes, you got to get in your head. Because you're going to be doing those daily. Those, those don't go away. That's why phlebotomists are, they have a job a lot is because of the, uh, all the time you're doing uh, some of those tests over and over and over because they're trying to figure out this person. That's why nurses couldn't do it. There ain't no way that we could just be, it, it would have to be a nurse that draws blood. So instead they made it a skilled job and become the body because it is a skill. It's a skill and you get better and better and you start learning. But you got to know the basics and the wisdom behind it. Um, and then um, you can, you'll have it all the way down there. All right. Flip it over. Purple top tube, what's in it? Which is your lavender. EDTA, and what's your main test? What's that main one? CBC. CBC, complete blood count. That's what it means. Count all your, your blood. So what if I want a CBC with diff? Still the same, too. All it's going to do is differentiate all the white blood cells because it's going to count. And ratio, they do ratios and they do mean values and averages of all that stuff. That's what complete blood count means. But if they do a diff, they're going to break down all the white blood cells and, and do a, a percentage of that as well. Um, your white top tube, very much the same. Um, EDTA and uh, calcium, underline that. That's what's very special. If you notice, the purple says forms calcium salts to remove calcium forms calcium salts, but the whole point is about the calcium. It binds the calcium to do something. And that one's good for your uh, DNA testing as well. But when we say DNA testing, paternity testing, what two we going in? Yeah. There you go. 
Great top tubes. Most of the time, we're going to think sodium fluorine, but it also has, or potassium oxalate. But sodium fluoride is an anti-glycolytic agent. It means it's not going to break down glucose. That's why we're going to test, and that's the best test to, for um, glucose. Because it has an anti-glycolytic agent in it called sodium fluoride. So it will not break down your glucose so we can test it. Huh? They do. You know why? Because they're probably seeing um, if their blood sugar is low too. And they probably can pull it out of both. And that's what, I don't want you to confuse yourself. These are your main tubes. But if, if they can figure out a way to pull the blood out and have the same test done in one tube, they will. That's why the red tube is so wonderful. It has nothing, no additives. We're just gonna put it in the red tube and let them deal with putting it somewhere. But in a gray tube, just because sodium fluoride is there, it may be that it doesn't break down drugs either. And so let's so just use the gray tube. Maybe so. Okay. Is powder in a gray tube? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it can be. Yeah, because they probably do different samples of it, and it probably is that it doesn't break down glucose because they're pro they're gonna test for the glucose too, mm -hmm. because some people are not driving well because their blood sugar is too low. They, they and, and and they're gonna rule that out. Is what they're gonna do. Uh, That's what they're gonna do. They got all that stuff in there. Spice and bug spray. It might not have showed up, but a lot of times a weirdness will show up. Uh, they call it MDMA. That's what, when, when, you, when people are using spice, that comes up to MDMA. And that's some weird stuff they done added together. And maybe, I bet it showed negative though. She could be high as a kite on some bug spray. Don't mess up my good thing. No, it was already messed up. She told me she ain't gonna get no blood out of there. Oh. So she told her to go to the other one. Yeah, they're all over. You even wouldn't believe it. I worked at Turning Point long enough to realize there are drugs everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you would not believe it. The people are using drugs everywhere. Oh, see how she can find When you get bored right. and you're sitting home and you read a book or watch Netflix, they out there using meth. That's what they do. <laughs> While you sitting relaxing, just chilling, enjoying yourself. They enjoying themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pink top too. Also has that EDTA in it. Uh, it's that color group. That color group stays together. Um, and it, they, it, they didn't even put them together. But all your um, EDTAs should be drawn together. Again, it binds or forms calcium salts. Light brown, which is your tan, think lead. And I always thought rust. I don't know why. I don't think lead is rust, but I just think rust. Some children eat lead. And I just think of rust. Uh, black top tube, underline that for se uh, sedimentation rate. Uh, sedimentation rate. Um, Rheumatoid arthritis patients have a bad sed rate. That means something happens, I think it's heavier than normal. Sedimentation rate. Rheumatoid arthritis, they have a bad sed rate. Um, that's, that's what we pull them black tubes out for. And a yellow black top tube. Again, that's the one we were talking about. The one when we say yellow, that's your microbiology. Anything going to microbiology is mostly sterile. And it's got to have a, if it's a raw mixture in there, you're going to rarely see it. Because you're going to see the, um, the little ones that look like little wine bottles. Mm -hmm. The little bottles. Less than that, that yellow tube there. Specimen transport. All specimens must be placed in a leak-proof container. Underline that. And y'all know this. It's just, they're putting some words to it. Uh, tubes must be bagged in a special biohazard specimen bag with a requisition slip. All that has to be happening when you're sending it off. 
Underlying that safest and most efficient method for transport is the pneumatic tube system. Just like the bank. You put your money in the little tube and it goes, shoot, shoots away and they shoot it back. Whatever they, hopefully they shoot money back. But that's your pneumatic tube system. Um, place tubes in a biohazard bag, attach the requisition slip, place the biohazard bag in the pouch, completely seal the pouch and lead, load the pouch into the pneumatic tube and send to the lamp. That's your most um, safest way to do it. A lot of times they've got bubble wrap. You just wrap it in a little bubble and put them in there. Um, certain specimen must be transported to the lab more quickly. We need to um, transport it quickly because of this next sentence. Blood and urine samples must be transported quickly in order to increase the chance of pathogen detection. In other words, um, you keep it too long, sometimes pathogens grow. Keep it too less, sometimes they break down and die. And it's because they're not in their environment. But, um, but it needs to be within two hours. That's that next sentence. Especially your serum specimens should be transported, transported to the lab within two hours. Serum specimens within two hours. Um, a delay or improper transport can mess up or hemolyze a specimen. Hemolyze means it broke down the um, or clotted the um, blood and you don't want it. Um, also, don't let the word essays mess with you. It, it's same thing as tests. If you have an essay, it's more like an essay of tests. That means that you've had a lot of tests. Um, so they, you may have an essay, but all essay meaning is just an adjective type word meaning a lot, or you have a variety of tests. Um, underline this. Now this, this last piece is very important. Other specimens need to be preserved before testing or analysis should be done or kept cold. Sometimes we're going to have to put them in icy water for transport. And these are them. The essays requiring a cold or chilled specimen are your blood glasses, ammonia, lactic acid, catecholamine, renin, parathyroid hormones. Main ones to remember, blood glasses, blood gases, gastric ammonia, lactic acid, that first top. Blood gases, gastric ammonia, and lactic acid. We're going to put them in a little, uh, same ball has a bag, but we're going to fill it up with ice. Or some have uh, cups. How do y'all do it? We put them in cups. Well, I send it and then stick inside the um, bio bag. So kind of like nurses, if they collect it, they just put ice inside the bio bag yeah. and they send it. They put the tube. Oh, wait, yeah. Um, but uh, phlebotomists might have their own little ice. They actually put it in there. Yeah, we do icy water. A little block thing that we stick the tube down inside. Mm -hmm. And it keeps it, keeps it going. Okay. Yeah, we do that a lot. You got to have that for those tests there. Blood gases, gastric pneumonia, like the acid. Then, some of them are also light sensitive, so they can't see the light. And it's best to wrap the collection tube in aluminum foil. Um, some places don't have aluminum foil, they use something else, but as long as it is, don't have no light coming to it. But most places, aluminum foil is handy and easy, and it, and it wraps around so easily, that's why they use aluminum foil. And it's blocking the light. So, um, that's the wrap the collection tube in a little bowl. And those tests are bilirubin. Y'all know what bilirubin is? Yes. It is the jaundice. byproduct of your liver. Jaundice. And jaundice. And just like babies, when they put them on their light when they're first born, that is actually pulling out bilirubin, which helps jaundice. Um, all of that. First together, yes. And that's why it's probably um. I have no idea why, but the most accurate is gonna be in a um green tube as well. It says teeth. They probably they probably gonna put it where they need to go. They got little things that they do in the medical lab. But yeah, it should be protected. I'm only a bit of ribbon. Yeah, they look, they look they're a little darker than the SSC. They're darker? Uh, you know, they like the what did you color. call it? The SSC too. They're darker? A little bit. Mm -hmm. I burned one of those too, so you see. Yeah, I, I've never been uh, darker. 
But you know, it needs to be covered in aluminum foil. Ask them and ask them why they don't protect the Billy Rubin. It's got to be Billy Rubin. Mm -hmm. It is. Most of the time when the babies get remixed, yeah. they put it in there for the so we have to pull for the Or do you immediately take it to the lamb? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. Yeah, it, you don't have time to But sometimes they have a routine, and they don't have those. Take it straight. And I try to get all my patients, or I just, if I'm on my floor, I've got a lot of patients, I'm sitting down. Yeah, you should ask them. Ask your supervisor, not the nurses. They don't know already. Yeah, they don't, they don't know. Ask your, um, your supervisor. Why we don't cover our Billy Rubin? I learned in class that day. We put some cook. <laughs> Why we don't cover our? <laughs> but that's most accurate. Billy Rubin, beta carotene, and erythrocyte protoporphyrin. I never say that word right. But I never had to say it. But uh, that is a test. <laughs> that you have to say. Well, I know it's for real. Let's see. Um, page thirty-seven, thirty-six. Procedure complications, maybe, and hopefully y'all haven't had any of these. Um, has anybody had anybody blow a vein yet? Mm -hmm. Those are scary. If you see, if you see that little vein rising at all, if you see it rising, pull that needle out ASAP, and don't just pull it out and let the blood leak. You still do. You say, mm, I gotta stop this. Be patient. Be be calm, but don't be uh, slow. So what happens if they actually bust? It never happens. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, they just call it that. Oh. It don't. <laughs> it's not gonna bust. You have busted it. It it means that you probably went through the vein, and you're right there at the vein, so it's still bleeding. You're still pulling blood. Sometimes you you got the blood, but it's leaking out into their skin. Oh, okay. And it, it'll cause a little bubble. If you see it rise at all, you need to go ahead. Um, do you proper? Don't just go. Whoa! I, I had one of my students do that. <gasps> it's, it, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes happens, but um, still, you just stop the blood draw. You put your gauze above it and pull that needle out as soon as possible. Like him with it, I have to say it as soon as possible. But don't just pull it out the arm. <laughs> but that that is scare you. That is scary. But always, always watch for that rise in the skin. If you, you see, see any kind of rise, just pull up. Yes, I've seen it in the hand. You've done it. I've done it in a hand once, and I've done it here. I was like, ooh, I'm so sorry. A lot of times you'll know that they went through after on your arm because it kind of leaks up under, and then next thing, you know, you didn't even think they hurt you, but... And they don't hurt you. It's just that um, it still leaked through the vein. That's why when you get through with your blood draw, always hold pressure. If you don't allow it to clot, then it's not going to clot, and it's going to leak into the skin. Then they're going to look at it the next day, and it's going to have bruise because that is blood leaked into the skin. And um, even though you did the best blood draw it is, you still you got to hold that pressure so that it'll stop bleeding. So don't forget that pressure. That's yeah. maybe the most important part of not seeing all those purplish. A friend of mine. And white people are the worst. <laughs> it looked like somebody had, you know, just tearing them apart. Yeah, a friend of mine, he had a bruise this big yeah. on his arm. Because it goes up under. You don't really know it at that time. Because it goes up under your skin and then it kind of yeah, it up. yeah, it looks terrible. It looks terrible. Light skin, I should say. Lighter skin people. I know. Yeah, I've seen it too. I've seen it. It's just.